Billabong Pipe Masters presented by Hydro Flask. We're celebrating 50 years of this competition, and those were some of the golden moments in history. And we have more history coming your way right now because we have a loaded semifinal number one with Kelly Slater and John John Florence facing off to earn a spot in the final. BL, what do you think about this matchup? <laughs> It's a cracker. It's a world class. They don't get any better than this one, Kaipo. Great to have watched the women's. I watched it in real time, and, and you're right. The waves have turned on. They've, the lower tide has made a really good improvement. The wind's great, and the conditions are just what we want them to be for this heat. Just what we needed. Billabong Pipe Masters, presented by Hydroflask, semi-final number one, Kaipo Goro, along with Barton Lynch on the call here. And we have a cracker of a heat out in the water. John John Florence versus Kelly Slater, two surfers that you would expect to be in the semifinals. Both of them tremendous performers here at Pipeline. John John Florence, two-time world champ, 2016 and 2017. Kelly Slater, 11-time huh, world champ. <laughs> Seven-time Pipe Master, three-time Triple Crown champ. He's won the Pipe Pro out here two times as the QS, and he's also done it at Waimea, where he's won the Eddy in 2002. A man that has done everything in surfing competitively. We call him the GOAT because he's the greatest of all time. We sure do, and he continues to inspire at 48 years of age. Who would have thought, Kaipo? I, I remember being 33, 34 on the tour, and I was old. And then you add another decade or more, and you go, oh, my gosh, this kid has certainly unlocked the fountain of youth and continues to form at a, uh, perform at a world-class level. You know, he, only a couple of years away from 50 years old. Who would have thought that was possible? So head-to-head -head matchups between these two surfers. Uh, John has got Kelly Slater a couple times. Kelly Slater six times on top of John John Florence. Um, but talking about the GOAT and, and how he's transcended ge generations, Kelly Slater, Barton, you were competing against Kelly. Yes. And now he's competing against John John Florence. A whole, this is, he skipped one, two, three generations to be where he is at right now. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. And that, I suppose that's where the experience and the knowledge and the, the ability to compete comes from, is that experience with our generation when it was very dog-eat-dog dog and, and it was sort of defining and pioneering. And he's worked his way through these generations and continually had the assets and the tools that it's taken to be competitive and continue to win. It's, it's astonishing. And look at the Grinch, mm. sneaky little fella. <laughs> Just like Kelly Slater having a look at this one. Pipeline, Slater grabs the rail, parks it in the pit, and comes out. And a carve just for good measure after that. Slater, strong ride here to begin his account against John John. John John drops into Ooh. this one, pulls up on the rail. The spit comes out, and so does John John. <laughs> wow, I can't wait to see these replays. John John thinking priority and getting out before Kelly. He most probably would have went for an air there any other day, but he saw Kelly and went, let's get out the back and keep the priority. Wow, Strider, what you got going? Woohoo! Well, you yourself. guys, are you kidding me? That was out of control. Kelly Slater was so deep, I couldn't even see him looking into the barrel. Then John John follows it up and does the same thing, side slipping in the barrel on the foam ball and comes out. That was incredible. John got out and got the priority. Intent looking back out. Incredible surfing right there. Kelly looking really relaxed right now, though. The face, the calmness. He's trying to hold back a smile, it looks like. <laughs> All right. Wow. Well, we're watching the replays right now, Strider and oh. Slater just came from behind the foam ball there to go complete for you can't wait to see yeah. john john's two i feel like john might have got the advantage here we go kelly late such great technique he's just done that so many times beautifully positioned that whole section just falls in front of him it gets tight and it gets small you can see the spit of the wave there and there's only a little spot up high that he can get out of and he was right where he needed to be and you can tell he knows he's up against someone at, at most probably as great as he is in john john florence and he just keeps driving that board trying to rack up the points and continue to build pressure that was just a radical barrel. Here we go with John John BL. Woo! A more critical takeoff, a more critical wave. Obviously, the second wave of the set looked a little bigger, looked a little gnarlier, and I see the advantage going to John John Florence on that opening exchange. 
One more look in slow motion of the backhand barrel riding technique of John John Florence. And, and he's setting up for the air. He sees Kelly and goes, no, no, no. Priority is more valuable than an extra 0.5 for an air. And the competitor, right, to exit a mm -hmm. barrel and then automatically just put your competitor head on and realize, hey, I got to get out there first. I'm gonna, I may have the advantage of a score, and the advantage of a score and priority is key. Double bonus. And, and shows the maturity and, and the understanding that he has. I suppose when you've, you're looking at a talent of, like John John Florence, you start to imagine that they could just do it with their surfing ability. But it, it's, this game is so tight and there are so many incredible surfers that it doesn't work like that. You have to have that competitive now. John John Florence showing it there in the opening of this semi-final and the judges taking their time, Kaipo, to think about this one and get it right because this exchange critically important in, in how this heat will play out. Yeah, the judges no doubt utilizing their replay to watch these waves numerous times to before they finally lock in their final score. Flying from up above, and you can see the separation of two surfers. Slater giving a little bit of space to John John, knowing that John John has priority at this moment. And early indicated Kate Shins on our score scoreboard is that both rides will go into the excellent range, both Kelly Slater and John John Florence. 8.33 for Slater, waiting for scores for Florence, a 9.23 to begin his account. Yeah, very close, uh, less than a point in it. I felt like there might've been a little more than a point in that exchange, but uh, Kelly getting the first one was a great strike without the priority and now he's on the outside. And, and the back door, we've, we've seen the pipeline turn on amazing compared to what it was this morning. It was quite average this morning. Here we go, both guys having a look. John John wants it. He wants back door, pulls in. It's a trainer, a Ooh. spit and an exit for John John Florence. Oh, that and turn. <laughs> throw the hack in there right in the shallow reef section to close that wave off. What a performance. What a second ride. The pressure is going to be right on the the 11 time champion. We can't call him the champ because they're both champs. The GOAT, as he is known, the greatest of all time, is going to be under a lot of pressure now because that was an extraordinary ride too. Well, Pipeline has turned on for a couple of Pipeline's favorites in the mm -hmm. way of John John Florence and Kelly Slater. And we can get a little bit spiritual with if we want, but it seems like the pipe is turning on because these guys have, both of them, have a close, intimate relationship with this wave. Look at John John. Falls out of the roof super, super late, just squeaks under that, and you can see the amount of water that spits out of it. That turn, I'm sorry, that does it for me as much as the tube ride did. And John John Florence doesn't look like a massive guy, but the power he puts in so deep, and then all of that power spitting out of the wave. And watch this turn, folks. That was gold. That's as good as it gets. Uh, power, class, style, everything you could ask for in an amazing ride right there on display from the two-time champ. Yeah, the combination of a oh. searing maneuver and a deep barrel, not to mention a really technical, heavy drop on that wave. Strider, you saw that drop. What'd you think? Well, we'll get back with Strider because we just saw a little, like, you know, a couple of... A bit of fun out there between the boys. Yeah, gestures between the boys right here. T 24 minutes and 15 seconds counting down. Still waiting for scores for John John Florence on his second wave. But early indication again is that it's going to be an excellent score. Here's the judges. And it comes in at 8.93 BL. Incredible ride. And uh, I, I, somewhere in there, I feel like that 8.33 is a good score for Kelly and he'll take some confidence out of that because I feel like there's a, there was a little bit, it could have been down in the high sevens almost that way, but wasn't one of those critical crazy pipeline tubes. It was one that he kind of manufactured, he was in there, he was deep, but it wasn't super critical. Um, and that would give me confidence. The fact that, you know, John's had those two rides and, and they're both within a point of what I've been capable of, not on the best wave. And that would give me that confidence that, hey, if I put myself on the best wave, I'm going to be right there with him and able to match his scores. And we've seen Kelly Slater come back from much worse situations than this before. Right, you are. That was a radical drop from John John Florence. Uh, Waz, your head above water now? You out there? Uh, I am. I'm above water, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> So just by, it wasn't, it wasn't by design. He literally, it ended up being that way. 
basically John John Kelly Slater Slater. He paddled him as deep as he could so that Kelly couldn't go left and angled in front of him just so that he couldn't split the peak and take any shine away from his wave and then fell out of the sky and got that right. It was a complete and total tactical maneuver and just genius because if Kelly was on that, that wave going left, it might have taken you know some, some steam away from his right. I, I've just... I've seen Kelly do it a million times, and John John just did it to Kelly. And obviously, coming out of that barrel, that boy has been working on some serious leg work. Those turns he's doing are second to none right now with Power Zone. You're right, Strider. We got a healthy John John Florence, and uh, he just stuck it to the master in a way with Kelly Slater. With that positioning, you could see the little conversation they had after the fact <laughs> yes. of that of that positioning by John John. But um, incredible to put himself in that area. Yeah, and, and he, he had Kelly blocked. He knew what he was doing. And both the, we're watching two of the very best at their very best. Kelly obviously has been at that level for a long time. But when John John Florence lays a turnover, oh. there is a power and a drive and a sear that when you look at the size of him, it doesn't, you don't, it come, must come from passion. It comes from somewhere else. Because, you know, you think of Michelle Perez and some of those big, big guys we have on the tour and you expect that power from them. But when John John Florence lays a turnover, nobody is more powerful. Yeah. John John Florence, 6'2", and it seems like he's growing into his frame, mm. you know, going from kind of a lanky kid to yeah. a little, you know, more more muscle. And it's really good to see John John back and healthy. You know, he was battling that knee injury, came back a little too soon, injured it again. And so it's been a roller coaster, I'm sure, for, for John John. But to see a healthy John John pushing full power Oh, it's it's a it's an incredible thing to see. Yeah, and 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 for me, I feel it when he does those turns. I feel something. It gets me on the edge of my seat. It makes me jump up, and that's what it does with the judges too. You know, you imagine you're a judge and you sit there and you watch surfing all day. Um, the visual of it is quite repetitious, and you're just watching it. But when you feel someone surf and the power and the energy and the passion they have in what they're doing and you feel it, that's when those massive excellent scores come through. That's the difference between the good and the great. Let's see what John John's thinking here. And it's a paddle. Finds another bubble at the back door, traveling through <laughs> time traveling, another section, and he comes out. John John Florence is putting on a show and putting a big challenge to Kelly Slater. Will he better that 8.93? That's the question. I don't think so. Smaller wave, not as critical. And if we're talking critical nature of things, that, that late drop into that gaping barrel that spat so strongly proved that. Here goes Kelly. Having a look. Decides against it. Wow. Yeah, I feel it. You know, he's going to be throwing away excellent scores by the end of this heat, you would imagine, because there's a third one that he's going to get big scores for. And it was a nice length of tube, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, if we look back at 2019, John John Florence returned to competition to keep his ranking. And here's the year end uh, rankings on the Jeep leaderboard. John John Florence just one spot over Kelly Slater. And that one spot earned John John a place on the USA team to represent the USA when surfing enters the Olympic Games. So that was an important competition for John John. He got his job done, even though he was still had that nagging knee injury in 2019. Yeah, we were there in Brazil together, Kaipo, when we saw him injure himself. And he, you see there he finished seventh in the world. And, and before that injury, it looked like he was on his way to a third world title, didn't it? We were all yeah. so impressed by the John John Florence we were watching. The knee went, and it was like, oh, no, but he still finished seventh in the world that year, even with the injury. So so good he is 7.5 7.5 not going to be one of his top two for that last drainer at the back door for john john florence a healthy john john florence at the beginning of the road to the wsl finals right here at pipeline could it be john john's year for third world title i think if he stays healthy throughout the entire year could be and and spending a whole season here on the north shore living here challenging these type of waves these type of reefs these type of energy and power that the ocean has every day month month in month out for the duration of a, a winter everybody is beat by the end of it so it's a tough place to kind of live and train and stay healthy because the ocean is just always giving it to you well it takes a special equipment to ride pipeline and to perform at a top level with more insight on that equipment let's go to strider wazalewski 
Thanks, yeah, Kaipo. I caught up with both of them as they paddled out. John John was first. He came out just talking about how perfect the waves look. So mindset was there, all excited. But then also asked him about the board. So he's on a 6'2", which is how tall he is. So you can imagine these waves are pretty heavy out here. He's riding a board that's, you know, the same height as him. So then Kelly was next, paddled out, same happy that the waves were pumping. And actually said, hey, is there enough for us to go battle? you know, wave for wave. And I said, well, it looks like it. And he was so excited that there was going to be enough surf to go wave for wave, which was a cool insight to his, you know, preheat thought. But he's riding a 6-1, which interestingly enough, I think he's 5-9. His wingspan, though, tip to tip on his arms is 6-1. So he's riding a board that fits in just inside of his arms. Thanks for the intel, Strider. And um, gosh, we've seen pipe boards shrink over the years, haven't we, Dale? Oh, dramatically. And it, you, you imagine that in the modern day surfer, the, in, in the older days, you wanted to stroke in, get a nice clean in early, get the bottom turn and set that tube up. In today's world, that just doesn't cut it. You'd be getting threes if you were doing that. Right. You know, you need to be dropping in underneath it late, critical for the judges to get excited. And so the boards have shrunk. Um, but again, they're riding small wave boards essentially at the pipeline. It, it's what it seems like. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they're some of the volumes hidden in those boards, but like you said, the goal is to be in barrels where it looks like you're not going to come out and then come out. Yeah, exactly. Be so far back. And you imagine a big board in that critical part of the wave with the white water and the foam ball. It, it just, it's harder to control. So the smaller boards you can take off later, you can control the foam ball, control the, the crazy rodeo ride inside that tube and, and just manage things, make them more critical. And, and that's where surfing's at. And we heard the great Jerry Lopez when you yeah. and I got to talk to him say that surfers today are much better than we were. And um, I, I, or he was, his generation was, and, and obviously I feel exactly the same way. I look at the, the level of surfing and the, the critical nature of what they do, and they are so much better than we were. I agree. Well, it's just the pure athleticism of mm. these surfers and how they're able to paddle small equipment into yeah. large, gnarly waves over and over again. And uh, it, it baffles me at times when I see either surfers here at Pipeline or when we go into stop two of the championship tour, what surfers are doing at sunset, which has been notoriously a big board wave for everyone, but you see amongst the world's best, those guys are riding six threes out there. Yeah, six three to six eight would be the size range that most people would ride at sunset. But that must be it. Must be said that there's some different lines that can be taken at sunset, and the critical nature of the judging and what they have sort of deemed to be great surfing has meant that people are riding different waves at sunset. Generally, they're riding, waiting for the ones that sort of come in to that inside bowl, double up on it, and there's a little spot you can sit in there where you don't need a big board. But if you're going to paddle out the back, you need a big board. 15 minutes, and we are going to be back with more action. The conclusion of an epic semifinal, semifinal number one at the Billabong Pipe Masters. Heading into the 1993 Pipe Masters, six surfers remain in contention for the world title. In fifth place and at 29 years old, Hawaiian Derek Ho was the oldest among contenders, which included defending champ Kelly Slater and world champ Martin Potter. But his pipeline knowledge beat the odds, making him the first Hawaiian to win a world title in the entire 18 years of the tour's history. While he'd claimed the title by making the semi-finals, Ho continued on to win the entire contest, possibly because he didn't know he'd won already. Derek Ho finishing off the year in style with the world title and the Pipe Masters in the bag. Derek Ho making Hawaiian surfing proud with that first world title, 1993, the king of pipeline, Derek Ho. I oh, know, mate. It's uh, pretty sad to watch, pretty hard to watch, and... Uh, you know, the thing I just keep in my mind is that he got to live his dreams. That's you know? right. And our brother got to live his dreams. And you look at that crew on that veranda, Michael Ho, Jerry Lopez, Johnny Boy Gomes. So his place is set. Um, he will not be forgotten. And uh, what a great moment. We love you, Derek. Yeah, And brother. you will always be in our hearts. Indeed, mate. 12 minutes and 15 seconds counting down in an epic 
semifinal here. And John John Florence putting a challenge to the 11 time world champ, Kelly Slater. Slater with priority, however, he does have an excellent score of 8.33, needs a 9.83 to take this one off of John John Florence. Still plenty of time on the clock for Kelly Slater. 11 minutes and 48 seconds. Billabong Pipe Masters presented by Hydro Flask. Semifinal number one out in the water and two Pipeline's favorite surfers, John John Florence and Kelly Slater doing battle out there and excellent scores have been dropping in the semifinal number one clash and we knew it was going to be a good clash on Kaipo Guerrero with 88 world champ Barton Lynch. We saw this on paper, Barton. We knew this was going to be a good matchup. And all the way, Kelly Slater hasn't had it easy. He's had some tough heats, Jack Robinson, and he's just kept standing up and continuing to deliver. But this is his toughest challenge yet because this guy has competitive now, competitive experience to match the surfing talent and a, and, a, and a relationship that you were alluding to before with this wave that equals and rivals Kelly Slater, and he doesn't surf many heats against people that have that. Slater, patient, needing that 9.83, well within his reach with his skill set out here at Pipeline. Like I said, seven Pipe Master titles to his credit. Some positioning going on. Can't wait to see the number one moment from the Pipeline history. That's going to be amazing. Here we go. Slater, back door, way behind, big cavern, and that one runs off without Kelly. John John takes the priority. He'll see the board pop up, see Kelly pop up, and it's a great feeling when you know your opponent didn't make that ride and didn't, didn't stake a claim against what you're doing, and you've got the priority. So advantage, John John Florence again. Ten minutes remaining, and now Slater surfing under the priority of John John Florence. Went for it on that backdoor wave. It looked like a long wall out in front of him. I can't wait to see the replay of that, but Kelly, you know, he must have seen something. Here it is. Well, he's looking for tens, isn't he? And that's what he's got in his mind. And I suppose 20 feet across, maybe there was an end to that one. Uh, you could see where John John has set Kelly's expectation of what he has to do to beat him. And I think what we just saw there was a direct... See, there it is. Ke yeah, if he was a little bit further, maybe 10 feet across, yeah. you think? Um, but that's what John John Florence's performance to date has done. <laughs> see him snickering and having a little lug. Oh, no, I didn't make that one, mate. What a shame. Looked like it was a little long on you, eh? And it's nice to see the mid-heat conversation between John John and Kelly talking about their waves. But when the next set comes in, I'm sure there's not going to be a lot of talk between these two. And uh, just talking to Kelly scares me for John. I go, don't talk, mate. Keep the focus. Here he goes again. Slater backdoor once again. Knifes it through there. Ooh. Training barrel way back there. Kelly coming. Slater, can he come out? Oh, I thought he was coming out, Kaipo. Well, we've seen it before. Yeah, we have. We've seen that before. That felt like a great opportunity to turn momentum, didn't it? And if he'd come through that, it, it would have been one of those momentum changing moments and started to put some pressure on. Almost a 10 for Slater, but oh, the Grinch just pulled it away. <laughs> Well, it was a, you know, there were a couple of 10 point rides there, waves that if he was positioned better for takeoff and completed them, there could have been two that would have really put some pressure to John John Florence. Super deep. Oh, I think we see Kelly Slater make them quite we've, often. We've seen him make those. Yeah. Yeah. Here's another view of it, BL. Drops in, pumps and drives the board. And you see that there was that moment where I think the nose was heading down from the first pump and he tried to pull it back up to get it high on the wave face. But that little bit of downward momentum sent him towards the whitewater and maybe he interacted with that whitewater bouncing back up from the lip breaking and slowed his progression along and threw it down. And, and in the end, it was an, a, an incomplete. 7.35 on the clock. Florence with the lead and the priority over Kelly Slater. Taking a look at John John's past performances out here at Pipeline. A lot of quarterfinals there and even a runner up. 
And Kelly Slater there, you see Kelly's got him a few times, but that was a while ago when the John John Florence who was out there now was a younger, a younger man, didn't have the experience, didn't have the confidence. And uh, the John John Florence he's surfing against today is a different individual who looks like he is in potentially career best form. Well, at 28 years old, John John certainly is probably near the peak of his physical awareness and physical fitness. Um, someone like Kelly Slater has defi defied all odds at 48 yes. years old to be in such great physical conditioning. But John John, he's got to be like right at his peak right now. It's one of those things with Kelly. Have you ever heard him talk about what he does to stay in shape? I've never heard it. I've never heard him say, I do this or I do that. We don't know. There's some kind of mystery around Kelly Slater and how he stays so amazing. Look at this. John John on a trainer. That one got foam filled and there's not going to be an exit <laughs> for John John Florence. Now, priority switches back to Slater and opportunity switches back to Slater. And I suppose what we're seeing is the byproduct of scores being in that high excellent range that to improve on it you've got to go super deep and charge and really turn the judges eyes onto something that they don't expect and, and we're seeing both of these guys really have a dig at this time yes yeah, Slater looking anxious right now on his paddle back out trying to get into position more waves coming through a little bit of a bump in the swell this afternoon a welcome bump in the swell this afternoon mm -hmm. finals day at the Billabong Pike Masters. It didn't look like this this morning, did it? This no. morning we were all a little bit worried and it had a sleepy look to it and it was higher tide and it just was inconsistent, but it has turned on and, and yet again for the 50th year, the pipeline has delivered. Italo Ferreira coming up, semi-final number two and looks like he's got some padding. He's got a padded spring suit right now for his matchup with Gabriel Medina. I think what we saw in, in the, the quarterfinal was that he was unable to kind of keep himself afloat at times because the ribs were hurting so much that he couldn't use his body as Medina. And, and haven't we just got the best four surfers in the world in those semifinals at Pipeline? Yeah, it's all world champ semifinals this year. So what a great show and what a way to kick off the year at the World Surf League. Let's check out the heat recap, BL. Well, I can't wait to see it. Kelly Slater's first ride, the 8-3-3. Nice length to it. It was a set wave and we expected rights and they both came out with the lefts to start. And it was a bit of a surprise. And then John John got the one directly behind it, got a higher score, a 9-2-3. Just a bigger wave, hollower. And here he cut out the key priority that led him to the next one. This enabled him, that priority enabled him to control this situation and get the 8-9-3. And watch this turn, ladies and gentlemen. This nothing feels quite like driving the rail through a wave like that. Beautiful surfing by both Kelly Slater and John John Florence. They did not disappoint in this semi-final number one matchup. Slater with four minutes on the clock and still looking for a 9.83 or better with four minutes remaining. And Strider, what do you got? Well, just touching on what you guys were just talking about with how amazing it is to have these this caliber of surfing out here at the first event of the year. You know, the road to final starts right now, and they say that the beginning of the year gives you a good look into what the end of the year is gonna look like. Well, it's gonna be bananas, because these guys are all such good surfers. And here, right now, at the Billabong Pipe Masters, is just, we've been blessed with incredible waves, and four of the best surfers you could possibly think of in the world, and they're gonna match up into the finalized too. It's gonna be incredible. And here we have the beginning of the year, so I can't wait to see this thing play out. I agree. We can't wait to see it play out. And we got a hot semifinal number two coming your way. Italo Ferreira versus Gabriel Medina in a rematch from last year's final at Pipe. John John doing this for love, traveling and coming out. Without the priority, another great ride, throwing away a 7-5 already. And that's going to be a good score. I don't know that that will change it, Kelly Slater. Slater on a long, drawn out backdoor wave. But again, the exit eludes Kelly Slater. And the priority is going to be in the hands. Oh, no, maybe not. There's Kelly up and moving <laughs> super fast. You can never count this guy out. Let's see the paddle battle right now to the peak. Who's going to get priority in the final two minutes? Slater moving swiftly on the water. Looking for that 983 with and as long as it's within the under the 10 points and a single wave possibility, 
you cannot count out Kelly Slater. How incredible was pulling into that wave, it ran off, a closeout, then being so skilled is to duck back out the back of that wave immediately and paddle back out and get position. John John's one on the replay, a nice traveler. He enjoyed that one. Not sure how the judges will enjoy it. And here's Kelly from way deep driving. He knows he needs a big... He jumped right there. You saw him jump yeah. early. He saw the closeout coming. He knew priority was on the line. He took a dive, jumped. But as it turned out, John John Florence got the priority because Kelly had ridden the very yeah. last way. Yeah, it must have been so close that yeah. they would have to give it to the guy who, who rode the last wave. Would yeah. not get priority. But brilliant. Uh, brilliant effort by Kelly Slater. And now, John John Florence can really turn into a defensive plan against the 11 time world champ. And at this point in time, with an eight dropping for that last ride, he could be winning this semi-final with his third and fourth scores. The two, the, the two scores that he's throwing away right. are enough for him to still be leading this semi-final, such as the dominance been so far. He's managed the priority beautifully. His wave selection has been incredible, and the surfing's made me tingle. Well, it looks like John John Florence is going to be our first finalist here at the Billabong Pipe Masters, but Kelly Slater starting off a year with a third place with an equal third that's impressive and that's signs of things to come it sure is it's absolutely and he's he spent the off season surfing his brains out and we're seeing he's seeing and we're all getting to enjoy the benefits of that here we go he's calling john into this one he's gonna drop in because he <laughs> is a showman uh, he's gonna come and he's gonna come thing. out of that <laughs> <laughs> that was worth the interference, I guess. So no. Kelly Slater always putting on a show and just said, hey, Grom, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go. I don't care if you have priority. I'm going to do this one for the love. What a brilliant ending to semifinal number one. <laughs> oh, what a show that was. Incredible surfing from both guys. John John Florence clearly winning it, but Kelly Slater right there the whole time. And then, as he has done so many times before, as the siren goes, Kelly Slater will not be outdone at anything, at any time. And even if he loses the heat, he will do something that becomes a, a part of the story and part of history. Yeah, that was, that was, that was great. You like what you're seeing? Well, we got more <laughs> coming your way. Italo Ferreira and Gabe Medina when we return to the Billabong Pipe Masters. Do you like that? Well, if so, subscribe over there and then watch more videos over there. And then tell us your favorite videos down there. It's a three-step process. Do them all now.